Okay, so if you follow the channel in 2020, then you'll know that we talked about Tenet pretty much every other week, and though we thought that we'd picked the film completely dry of all its easter eggs, having gone back to it, I've found some amazing new details. Throughout this video, we're going to be breaking it all down, so come with us, protagonist viewer, as we go over everything we unearthed in our latest viewing. Now, the colours blue and red are laced throughout the entire film, and these help to let us know whether the characters are moving forwards or backwards through time. The colours are of course used heavily in the interrogation room and they're also present on the Tenor team watches and their armour. Beyond that though, these colours are present throughout the film and they show up in the first few seconds with the Warner Brothers logo being red and the Syncope logo being blue. Kat also wears a blue dress when the protagonist meets her and later on in the movie she wears red when she starts to turn more and more against her husband. During the heist sequence, we watch as the protagonist tries to steal part of the algorithm and he moves in on a red fire engine whilst the device itself is placed onto a blue armoured truck. He also rides a blue boat with Saito and Cat and turns this against the current, hinting towards the changes in direction that people later take against the flow of time. When the protagonist waits in the van with his SWAT team at the start, we see other vans pull up and you can see their sirens flashing blue and red on the top. That's probably coincidental, but the badge on the truck is actually red, with blue in the middle of it. This badge is what the protagonist uses when he ends up infiltrating the opera house, and there's quite another subtle detail here. When we first see the lineup of SWAT team members, all of their visors are steamed up due to their breaths, whereas the protagonist isn't. This is likely because he'd only put his mask and helmet on a couple minutes before, whereas the actual SWAT team had likely had theirs on whilst riding out to the location. When Neil saves his life in this opening, the seat with the reversing bullet is also blue, and when the protagonist runs out the opera, we can see that there's a big red sign beside him. Now the train tracks also have a lot of imagery here, including a big red train that appears in the scene. There are also some moving forwards on the line, whilst the others move back, and this of course foreshadows how time will be moving in two opposite directions in the film. It's also at this point that the protagonist takes a cyanide pill, but we later learn it's actually a dud that works less than I do watching movies all day. Come the climax of the movie, we discover that Sator has one of these, and he plans to take it which will in turn stop his heart and destroy the world. Look, look it's complicated, yeah? Now Cat kills him before this can happen, which should potentially mess up the timeline, however, there's an important line that Sator drops. He says that he got the pearl from the CIA, and as we know from the protagonist, these don't actually work. Therefore, even if he did take it, it wouldn't kill him, and this is why Kat shooting him doesn't change anything. She was always the person who was supposed to kill Saito, and therefore the pill is just something put in place by the CIA, or possibly Tenet, to make him feel like he's in control. Tenet very much run the entire show, and they even allow the bomb to go off at the end of the movie, so that the past version of Saito will think that he's won, and therefore he'll continue with his plan. Thus, I do think that the pill was also a trick by Tenet to make Sato think that he actually had a choice, when all in all, it was just something supplied by the CIA and the future protagonist. There's also a great line when the protagonist visits Sir Michael Crosby, played by Sir Michael Caine. I'm not sure if that's a play on his name, but he apologises to the protagonist for starting dinner without him. The protagonist says that he'll catch up, and this somewhat is a comment on his character, in which he has to catch up with the operation Tenet is carrying out that started without him. Now if you're enjoying the video so far, we'd massively appreciate the thumbs up, and also don't forget to subscribe as we do breakdowns like this every week, in which we talk about all the best hidden details in movies and TV shows. If this is your first time here, then welcome to the Heavy Spoilers Show. I'm your host Paul, aka the guy who's never backwards about coming forwards. Now let's get into the rest of the video. Now things going backwards and forwards of course is also shown in the dialogue as a lot of the characters end up talking backwards when they're inverted. During the highway chase there's actually a scene in which we hear Sador's men over the radio and because it's in reverse we can't understand what they're saying. However, huge shout outs to Reddit user Plot Davis for reversing it so we could see what Sador was telling his men. As Seda says that it's in the back of the Saab, and this is actually the make of car that the protagonist ends up driving after he inverts. The algorithm gets thrown into it, and I love the attention to detail that Nolan put into the movie here. There are also several versions in which we see small glimpses of the characters coming across versions of other characters inverted. When Neil approaches the turnstile at the end of the movie, you can actually catch a small lone soldier running in the distance. After looking at this closely and following the path that he goes on, I actually think that this is Neil after he's inverted at the turnstile. 
This area is somewhere that he'd have to travel through later and it's so cool seeing this lone soldier that he would later become. Now one thing that's difficult to get your head around is that Neil actually never unlocks the gate at the end, he is in fact the one who locks it. With Christopher Nolan creating one of the biggest head fucks of all time, it is a bit tough to grasp this concept, but we can actually catch him holding the door open during the scene and it's only when things have played out enough that he closes it, locks it and then runs back up the tunnel. It's a really good scene and his goodbye at the end of the movie also brings a lot with it. The protagonist asks Neil why he isn't with his team and he says he'll get them on the next pass, meaning that there's also another version of Neil running around in the final action scene that we don't know about. Didn't your team need you? Get them on the next pass. Neil asks the protagonist if he's going to go to London to check on Cat, to which the protagonist says no, it's far too dangerous. You're not going back to London to check on Cat, are you? No, it's far too dangerous. <laughs> Even from afar. Even from afar. Now this is actually a lie and come the closing scene of the film, we see the protagonist watching Cat from afar, which allows him to catch Priya and tie up the loose ends. However, the protagonist always knew that he was going back to London to check in on Cat and he lied to Neil, which Neil actually seems to get. We can catch him smiling just after he says this and throughout the film we're told that ignorance is the strongest weapon that Tenet have. In writing nothing down, not knowing anyone's name and also not keeping any records, there's no way that the people from the future can gain any information and therefore they can't warn their forces in the past. The protagonist finally learns to lie here and it makes Neil smirk because he knows that the protagonist will return to London and start to see Cat for the next chapter of his life. How he knows this? Well, that could tie into the theory that Neil is actually Cat's son, which we've covered in depth on another video. That'll be linked at the end, but in the meantime, I want to hear what you found in the movie and if there's any major hidden details that haven't been uncovered yet, then make sure you leave them below. We are in a competition right now that'll be linked on screen and all that you have to do to be on the chance of winning is like the video, make sure you subscribe with notifications on and drop a comment below with your thoughts on the film. We pick the comments at random at the end of the month and the winners of the last one are on screen right now, so if that's you then message me on Twitter at Heavy Spoilers. If you want something else to watch then make sure you check out our breakdown of A Quiet Place 1 and 2 which will be linked on screen right now. We point out all the cool details in the film that link across with one another, so it's definitely worth checking out right after this. Without the way, thank you for seeing through the video. I've been Paul, you've been the best, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care, peace.